Now, self-reports from the general public have revealed venting is very or extremely effective at elevating stress. So if you're anxious, it might just be the best option for you. Now, when I didn't share my feelings or my emotions and they were trapped, that wasn't really helping me out and it wasn't helping my anxiety for defo. This also decreased my communication with others and I started to feel lonely. Now this got worse and then this led to depression. So I would say a venting session would be extremely helpful. The solution to my problems was to talk. Let me explain how. Welcome to the fourth episode of this series, tips to dig anxiety from the root when everything else feels like it's going wrong. I'm Perception Shifter and in this video, we're gonna speak about let the stuff out and never keep it in, thinking that you can handle it. Now our mind wants to keep us safe, so it will always show us any future threats. For this reason, we sometimes find it hard to cope, especially when you faced a negative event in the past or things aren't going as planned. Now many of us do suffer from anxiety once in a while, and this is crucial for our survival. As anxiety, it keeps you on your toes, it motivates us and it also protects us for what is yet to come. And now from this, we begin to prepare in what we need to do. Here are some tips that will help you with your anxiety. The awareness of the power of talking. Now many of us haven't even heard of this before. Talking, talking about what? Why should I talk? They haven't felt better once they've even spoken. Most of us think that that couldn't really be the solution to all my problems, could it now? And most of them seek other advice maybe because it is kind of hard to talk with people and we do feel kind of embarrassed. But then at the same time, we get all this other information that, oh no, you can do this or the other with some other advice and we try and do that. But what talking can give you, nothing else can give you that in your life. We just don't know how to. Now, many of us have took on the advice that yes, let's start to talk. But now the question is, how do you talk? A lot of us do talk about what has happened, what might happen, or what is currently happening. But is that the right way to talk? We hesitate to talk. Who wants to show that they're weak? That is a no from the get go. Now the other issue is, who has the time to talk? We're all, all busy within our work and our family, but who really has that little bit of amount of time to then talk to someone? Okay, so you wanna talk and you're okay with talking, but then, who wants to listen? Who has the time to listen to you? We're all busy. But then, even if someone does want to listen, who wants to listen to negativity? Don't think anybody does. When you're telling someone how shit life is, I don't think they want to really hear that because they probably want to hear how good life is as their life might be just brilliant. Other issue we have is that we just assume a response. Now, when we have an idea fixated within our mind that when I do talk to this person, this is what the person's going to say. This stops us from speaking because what's the point of talking to someone if we already know what they're going to say, then the talking's done. Now, here's some solutions that we can look into together. Now, many things that we do in life does come with a little practice. Even when we were born and we started speaking for the first time, I'm sure you didn't make sense. But as you grew up and you spoke more and more, you had that practice now, and now you've been able to speak fluently. And I'm sure now a lot of people do enjoy talking. So the first time we do something doesn't always be our best time. Now I can't tell you enough how much power this has. When you talk to someone openly, freely. Now this is the only thing that helped me if I tell you the truth, and it still does help me. So now I do it naturally. I know when I need to do it and it just happens. You know, I've practiced it so many times now that I exactly know how to do it, how to talk, of course. So what tends to happen is I get a thought, something that's associated with something, or I just get a thought. Someone's told me something. Now, the minute that thought has come within my mind, and now if I do any thinking around that thought that, how could this possible? Why did this, this happen? Anything negative around this, and do that overdrive thinking for no reason. But then my mind has gone into that thinking. Now I need to release these emotions because now it's making me feel uncomfortable. This has now affected my mind. This will start to affect me physically. I could start to feel like I can't breathe. I could start to feel issues around sleeping. Maybe I don't feel like moving. Maybe I don't feel like going anywhere, speaking to anyone. So I do start to then start closing up within myself. My heart could start pumping really fast. So a little thought or something that someone has told you or any sort of news can affect you mentally but it can also affect you physically as well now when this has affected you now you're trying to pick up other advice from other people and they're trying to tell you calm down take deep breaths 
um, go to the gym, go for a walk, listen to some music. Very good, good coping mechanisms. But they are really good when you're already in a good place. So then you don't go into a bad place. For me anyway. The only thing that works for me is talking. Sharing these emo emotions on how I'm feeling. That's the best thing for me, I've noticed. And it's so simple. I'll just pick up the phone to anybody that is available that I want to speak to. And I've said, look, this is the news that I've heard. This is how I'm feeling and so forth. And I'll just let myself go. I start to then feel better straight away. I wouldn't need to then go out and do something to then change what's going on within my mind. Because if I tell the truth, any other activity that you do will only defocus you from the problem for a little while and then that problem will come back. And a lot of people have experienced this. A lot of people have gone and done other things, but that's the only thing still on your mind. Why? Because you haven't let it out. Now you can speak to somebody, but you can even write it down if you're not that sort of type of speaker as yet. I've never wrote anything down in my life in that sense. And I've heard a lot of research around it that does help. My own experience is me talking and making myself feel better over that. So we don't know how to talk. We don't know how to share these feelings and emotions. So let me tell you how. So when we talk, it's not just about has, will, or it's happening right now. It is more about this has, will or is happening right now is making me feel that's what it's more about rather than we saying this happened and she or he did this or that might happen and she or he might do this or this is happening currently and she or he is doing this it's more about this is happening or will happen or has happened and this is how i feel and this is what I have done and it's all about me what I could do or what I should do or what I could have done or you know what I'm doing right now so the feelings and the emotions are more important than anything else so if we are feeling lonely or we're feeling sad or we feel angry or we're feeling maybe even sick about something that we've heard or you know someone's done or we've done um, it's all about what's happening within ourselves regardless what's happened even if someone's done something bad to you it's not about them because what's going on in their mind and you're sharing about that isn't going to release your emotions because we'd never know what's going on in anyone's mind but what is going on in your mind and how you feeling it what you have experienced that experience now is trapped within you so you need to let that information out you need to tell whoever is in front of you on the phone that this is how i'm feeling i'm feeling lonely feel scared um you know this might happen that might happen that's fine but then how are you feeling about that this or that might happen or is happening now even if this is affecting you not just mentally but physically we need to share what, how it's affecting us physically as well so if it's you know if you can't breathe or if you're having trouble sleeping or um, you know, you just don't feel like being around anyone or whatever it is physically that's impacted you or your health, you need to share about that as well. Now, even when we are talking out loud, we'd be able to hear ourselves or if you're writing it down, you'd be able to see it. So when we are talking out loud and we'd be able to hear ourselves, we'd be able to see that is this correct information or is this just me just making things kind of up that ain't my reality or that hasn't happened or might not even happen. Is this just my brain looking into things that my mind is trying to stay away from or scared of. So when it comes out in the open, you'll be able to see it more clearly. And then you might come to a conclusion after that thinking, you know what, really, that's not what it might be, but it's just stuck in my mind that it might be this. So you've let it out now, so you'd be obviously feeling better because once it's out, it's reality. Because you've said it, because you've said it, that's reality because Okay, what's happened is not reality, but because you've said it, that is a fact. That you've said something, it's out now in the open. Now you'll be able to see that, is this the reality of the future or the past, or is it current? You'll be able to match that now because it's out. Whereas when it's in your brain consistently and it's just looping maybe, it's not going anywhere. You can't tell the difference between what's you imagining things and what you're making up or what is the actual reality of something. So yes, we do hesitate to talk. Now, the quicker we understand that it's okay not to be okay, and to suss out that you are weak, and to show that you're weak, the quicker you do it, the better it is for you. 
because the longer you keep it within yourself the more worse it will get for you over time and like I said if you start to defocus yourself on other things and think that you'd be able to handle it by yourself it's not going to happen because there is no way you can handle it within yourself we are made like this to share information with each other for that then that compassion for each other for that then uh, for us to empathize with each other you know we we are there for each other we are built like that to be there for each other and we need to use that tool as much as we can so not showing your weak is going to be a bad decision it's totally understandable we hesitate because we don't want to show that we're weak maybe at work maybe to a family member and it's totally understandable because we want to show that we are strong but this is strength this is using your strength in the right way because the more we speak to someone the more stronger we will get and we feel that the more we hide away our weakness the more stronger we look but we're not actually strong we might look strong but we're not actually strong within ourselves so that's that's fake and we feel that we want to be strong or look strong for our family or our work but what we don't understand is that we come first as our mental health is the top priority of everything else within within our life now if we don't have our mental health we won't have nothing else because then we won't have our family we won't even have a job it's best to keep our mental health in check and get strong originally rather than faking it and then losing it all yes indeed the easiest option is to forget it all and leave all the negativity behind you and think that you want to be more positive and you know try and get some affirmations in or like look into addictions as well maybe drinking a bit more maybe smoking a bit more and thinking that yes we will just suppress these emotions um but they are only for the time being i have a video on suppressing emotions you want to check that out I'll link it up at the top but yeah, you don't want to be doing that. You don't want to be suppressing your emotions because all they do is they come back worse. So what you want to do is 100% do not hesitate to talk. Talk it out, talk it to someone. And like I spoke about in this video, how to talk, use that. Use your emotions when you talk. Now, negativity isn't something that you want to run away from. You want to keep negativity and play with it like a ball. It's simple. When you learn how to play football, you can only get good at it then. But if you run away from playing football, you will never be good at it. It's that simple. So if you want to play with negativity, you need to play the game. If you play it and you come out of it and you score a goal, then you'll be able to always play with it. You'd always be able to come in and go out when you want. But if you've never played it before, you'd never know how to play with it. So unfortunately, yes, we do need to go low to then go high. Now, the more effort you put in to go low, the more higher you would go. So how do we get people to listen to our negativity? What you do is you keep it short and simple. Whether you're talking or you're sending a text message to someone about something and then telling them to give you a call back when they get the time. So in that way, you're not ringing them straight away. You're not disturbing them in whatever they're doing and they're ringing you back when they get the time. So a message could be nice and simple, short and sweet. Now, when you share this information to them, you want to keep it short and simple and you want to be straight at the point. So, for example, um, my girlfriend's left me or my girlfriend left me one year ago and I still am feeling bad about it. OK, let's talk about this now. OK, so it's not. Oh, yes, I used to go here with her and I used to enjoy this and we used to enjoy that and she should have done this and she should have done that, but she didn't do this right and she didn't do that. No, 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 no. I think we're getting it all wrong. That's not sharing. Sharing would be, for example, I feel hurt. Um, I feel upset. I do miss her maybe at times. Um, I want to go maybe and find a better relationship. Everything that you want to do, maybe where you went wrong, maybe what you should do better in the future. And what are you feeling? How you felt then? You know, maybe you were in love, maybe you weren't. How you were feeling then? How you're feeling now? How you want to feel in the future? So what you want to do is you want to quickly just jump into how you are feeling about whatever's been going in your, in your thoughts, in your mind. And then you always want to replace that with a positive right at the end. You always want to come back with a positive. So then you start looking at the brighter side because now you know you've traveled You've gone back into the past, you spoke about your emotions, you've come back and now you can see reality. 
that this is where you are now. You are without someone now. You are single now. So now you want to look in the positive side of things. Okay, so now I'm single. So now I could probably focus more on my work, on my education, and you know maybe find someone new um, to have a relationship with and just watch out where I probably went wrong with I, not her, I went wrong. So yeah, these are the things then you want to switch into positive, like, you know, life is a bit more better maybe. I could use this time for this now. You know, so you need to look at the brighter things in life rather than the negatives. Once you've shared out the negative, that will leave you on a positive note and it also leaves the listener on a positive note. So keep your story to what you are feeling right now because everything that's going on, it's not in the outer world, it's more in the inner world. So it's more about what's going on inside you and that's what you want to talk about. So yes, we do assume a response at times because we just feel that we know the person and what they are going to tell you. What you know of a person is never that person. That is only your perception of that person. Whatever that person is in reality is that person and that person knows who that person is. Who that person is, no one will ever know. Whatever, I know it's a bit complicated, but whatever they think of that person is always untrue. Whatever you think of that person is always untrue. It's only what they think of themselves is what they really are. But what they think, we don't think. We think that there's something totally different. Maybe through one or two actions, then we've made a kind of a judgment of this person. And we feel that this is what they're gonna say to us. So there's no point me telling this person. And sometimes we don't wanna hear what we don't want to hear. So if that person tries to tell you, oh, cheer up, um, you know, life is better on the brighter side and not letting you talk, um, then that's what's going to be in your mind that, you know, even if I try and tell this person, they're not going to let me talk. They're just going to tell me to look on the brighter side. But then you need to tell them to give me five minutes. Just hear me out. Or if that person is going to give you any sort of um, any sort of other advice that you feel that you don't want or you don't want to hear. A lot of the times we can't get or take our own advice. Like for me, if I go into a situation tomorrow, I will need to share it and I will need to seek the advice. Even though I know the advice, that advice won't pop into my mind straight away because I will have it filtered through my emotions. Now, obviously it's hard to run without your emotions because then you won't be a human being and obviously your memory as well. So it's kind of hard for us to then come out with the solution. But when someone else tells us that's that solution, you're like, oh, well, I am like anyway. Oh, why didn't I think of that? I knew this, but why didn't I think of it? I didn't think of it because I was having that lens on and I was seeing the world through my emotions because my emotions were erupted at that time. So don't do any guesswork because we don't know what's going to be in someone's mind. We don't know what they're ever going to say to us. What they say to you, it does not matter. Whatever they say to you, whatever advice they give to you, it does not matter whatsoever because the only reason why you were talking was to let your emotion out. Once your emotions are out, you release them and not kept them in your mind, then whatever they've said to you won't make any difference to you. Yes, you can brainstorm something together and see what else you can do within your life, but that is something to do with your life and maybe your future. And this, what you were sharing about was mostly about maybe your past, what was currently happening or what you think that might happen. Um, so in terms of you on your thinking level, um, yes, you know, you've sorted that out and then you've spoke about it. So obviously that will then make you feel better. So it's not about what the other person is going to say. It's about what you are saying. Welcome to the new anxiety series. If you're suffering from this or you know that somebody is, then please share this video to them. Do subscribe for more wonderful content on this series. Tips to dig anxiety from the root when everything feels like it's going wrong. Hey, it's your boy Perception Shifter and I've been handling my addiction, my mental health and my criminal behavior. If you've had any value out this video, then please do smash that like button. Check out some of my other videos that are flashing up on your screen right now. If you like this one, you'd like these as well. See you in my next episode and remember, Today is your best day because you are the best.